starting now. Um, we are we are li live and recording, recording and live. Um, the call is how to put clients on a success plan or an improvement plan. If you have been on the <clears throat> call where we talk about we talked about, which I know, Gabby, you were on this call where we're talking about how to follow up with a four-week follow-up, right? What is that language like? This will sound extremely similar and very close to that uh, conversation. In fact, the steps are um, almost identical, right? So particularly this, <clears throat> let's say you do a you do an evaluation with your clients and they're not on pace. So let's say Kayla and I, she's my client, right? We, she's been working out. And then eight weeks later, I did an evaluation on Kayla and Kayla isn't progressing. Right. Um, so, and you can tell the client is discouraged, right? And you guys have all been in the situation where you do an evaluation with somebody. And then after you do the aesthetic part of the, the, the evaluation, as soon as you do the scan, they take a look at them like, ah, oh, right? and they get bummed up you know they get frustrated, right? So finish the evaluation, right? And if you feel like it's important for you to put this client on a, um, on a, uh, on a success plan, and this, this should say success plan, not four week follow up, but um, then you put them on a success plan, right? So how do you do this? The steps, like I said, are very similar to the uh, four week follow up. Um, so, but here's how this works. All right, so let's say I did an evaluation with Kayla and she didn't do well. And I know that she, she looks like she's bummed out. We finished the evaluation. And uh, step one, I'm going to, um, actually step one should be, write this down, this is not on here. Step one should be to uh, ask permission to speak freely. That should be step one. So in other words, hey, Kayla, I, I know you're bummed out about the, uh, the, uh, the evaluation. Uh, I, can, I can tell by your face, I, can, I understand what you're saying, but do you mind if I share with you some of my thoughts on this evaluation? Like, do I have your permission to, to, to speak for you? Right now, what I want you to know, like what I'm about to say is I, I need you to understand that first and foremost, I care for you as a client. I, I, I need to make sure that you are progressing. You need to make sure you're progressing, right? So there is a solution for this, but I, I want to state the obvious. Let's talk this through. Right? But I, but I want to make sure you're all right with that. You're okay to hear it. Make sense? Right, so ask permission. When you guys, when you guys uh, frame it that way, um, it's called pre-framing. When you, when you pre-frame it that way, you can really ask anyone anything as long as you, it's pre-framed correctly. Cool? So the situation is Kayla didn't do so hard on her eval. It's okay. And I'm asking permission. Hey, Kayla, I know that you, that you didn't do so hot. In the eval, I can see that you're frustrated. Do you mind if I share some things with you? I want to share with you some things that have been weighing on my heart um, for the last uh, four, five, six weeks. So I've noticed a few things, and I think this might be helpful or a good way to bring this up now. But I want to make sure you're okay for me to discuss this with you. Of course, instantly they're like, what the hell? <laughs> what do you want to tell me? Right? And so step Two, I guess, would be state the problem. Be very specific, right? So, Kayla, it's obvious that you haven't lost the weight. And I just want to acknowledge that. And I know that you know this, but I, let, let's just put this out there. Right? You haven't lost the weight. I know your objective was to lose the weight. And over the last eight weeks, you haven't moved the pound. And I know that's very frustrating for you. So be very specific about the problem, you guys. Don't beat around the bush. Okay? And though, by the way, there might be, you know, three or four different problems. Like there might be a situation, the problem maybe she hasn't been coming in. The problem maybe she's not eating right. right? I mean, but state one, state whichever one you want to address. Let's say in this case, we want to address the, the weight loss deal. She's not losing weight, right? Then step two, and, and re really we should say project eight weeks out. Or step three, you, you would project eight weeks out, not six weeks out. Right? So what you would say to Kayla is, Kayla, listen. I feel like if this, like if you and I don't figure out a solution here and something doesn't change, like in the next eight weeks, the outcome might not be, again, what you're looking for. And shoot, I really think that's 16 and 24 weeks down the road, you're just going to say, F this thing, I'm done. And I, 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to, I don't want to come back and work out. No, it's project the consequences. Does that make sense? And then step four, listen, doesn't matter how I feel about this though, Kayla, what matters how you feel about this. Tell me, your, some, tell me some of your thoughts on this. So ask for feedback. And most people, if you frame it like I just did, right, they will say to you, yes, you're right. Sorry, you guys, I'm getting a call. We'll just, we'll just keep rolling. Okay. They will say to you, yes, you're right. I haven't really, I haven't really lost the weight. Now remember, weight loss is not the problem, right? Weight loss is a symptom. The problem is something else. So part of this step here is to truly identify what the problem is. So if Kayla hasn't lost the weight and she admits the fact that if she's got to take personal accountability and you got to make some notes here to say when you ask for feedback, the individual that you're speaking to, they have to take accountability. They have to acknowledge the fact, yes, you're right. I haven't lost the weight. They got to take for some responsibility. All right. And then we need to brainstorm. Okay. So Kayla, weight loss, and you and I both know, is a product of day-to-day -day decisions, right? And so that's the question, right? What do you think the challenge, what do you think the problem has been over the last eight weeks that led you not to lose your weight? Right? And that's when people will be honest with you. They'll say to you, wow, I haven't been eating what I'm supposed to be eating, right? I've been stressed out of my mind. Whatever the, whatever the problem is, whatever it may be. And, it, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead to something. I wasn't disciplined. I wasn't motivated. This was not a priority. That's what it's going to lead to, right? Because if somebody says to me, I'm stressed out of my mind, you know, I'm not uh, eating what I need to be eating, right? Or uh, I'm not making a priority to pack my lunch or to pack my, you know, I, I'm, I'm eating out. It, it's, it's the, the problem is I'm not disciplined. I'm not motivated, right? I have, I have no, or not, I don't have enough accountability. Does this make sense to you guys? And they need to like agree with you that that's the issue. So Kayla, when you say to me, like you weren't really planning things out, it seems like there wasn't uh, enough support or there wasn't enough accountability there as far as nutrition goes. Yes or no? Because right? you know what you got to eat, right? I mean, we, we discussed the habit that you need to work on, right? So it's not the knowledge. It's, it's not simply because I don't know if I should eat an apple or apple pie, right? It's not, it's not that. It's more so you know what you got to do, but you just don't want to do it. Am I hearing you correctly? Right, and then she'll say, she would say, yes, gotcha. So what you're saying is the main challenge has been is you weren't disciplined enough. There just simply wasn't enough awareness or accountability when it comes to food. Right, right, got it. So, hey, listen, over the next eight weeks, let's identify a few things we can do to help you with that particular challenge around nutrition and specifically remember the challenge is accountability there's no support not enough awareness that's the problem right so then we brainstorm a few things so so what do you think you need right kayla in the next eight weeks to make sure that you actually do what you already know to do so backtrack for a second so step one should be, remember, you need to ask permission to speak freely, post a terrible evaluation. All right? Step two is state the problem. Don't beat around the bush. The problem is you haven't lost the weight. Or the problem is, Kayla, I, you've missed you know, six out of the last nine workouts. That makes sense? Whatever the, specifically the issue is. And then tell them how you feel about it. Hey, listen, if this keeps going, I feel like in the next eight to you know, 16 weeks, you're going to get totally disengaged because you're not making progress. And I feel like if you get disengaged because you're not making progress, because you're not motivated to get your butt in here like you're supposed to, you're just going to end up quitting. You're going to say, F this thing, I'm done. All right? And then ask for that, Kayla, it doesn't matter though how I feel. The question is, how do you feel about this? Like, is, is there any merit to what I'm saying, right? 
And I'm telling you, like everyone you talk to, they'll, they'll agree with you. Yeah, you're right. As long as it's a legitimate issue. Now, part of, you know, once I agree with you, that's me taking personal accountability. Right? And remember, weight loss or missing workouts, that's not the problem. Those are symptoms of a real problem. Right? And so missing workouts or not eating what you're supposed to be eating or, or um, gaining weight are uh, simply a byproduct of what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Right? And then you need to ask the individual, hey, what do you think is the challenge here? What are you, what are you not doing on a day-to-day -day basis for you to stay on track with nutrition? Or whatever the problem is. Right? So in our case, it was, it was uh, she, um, the, she, she gained weight because there's no accountability, right? There's, no, there's not enough awareness around uh, nutrition. That's the problem. I like it. Sounds good. Which means on a day-to-day -day basis, there's no thought at all about what I should or shouldn't be eating. So we need, to, we need to provide some support and some accountability more than we already have in the next eight weeks. So when we post solutions here, first I want to ask Kayla, Kayla, what do you think needs to happen, right? And she might give you one or two things, right? But you guys need to be armed with solutions, right? And so what you, would, what you might say to, uh, to the client is, okay, so once they, whatever solutions they give you, what else, what else, what else they might... They'll say, I'm not sure. And then you need to give a few. So, Kayla, how about this? Right now, you and I are working out together once a week in that small group training setting. You do really well. You're very consistent showing up with your SGTs. But you seem to miss a few team training sessions. So let me ask you this. What if for the next 21 days, what if for the next 21 days, you and I work out together a minimum of two to three times a week in that small group training setting? Do you think that would be more helpful because, because you and I would be seeing each other more frequently? Do you think that would be more helpful for you to stay on top of your nutritional game? Because you know, I would be asking you, hey, Kayla, what you have for lunch yesterday? Right? Would that help? Right? And then no one is going to say no. So you write that down. So one of your solutions is 21 days of SGT workout. Right? I'm not asking you to pay me any more money. I'm just, I, I, I want to give you help because you need help because I want to change your performance over the next eight weeks. Because right? the idea is for you to do better. Right? And I know you want to do better. Right? To suggest, hey, would it be helpful if I sent you a text message? Say, twice a week for the next eight weeks. And all the text messages are going to say, hey, Kayla, what are you having for breakfast today? Or what did you have for breakfast yesterday? Just anything nutrition related, just to keep it on top of your mind to make sure you are more aware. Would that be helpful? All right. Uh, suggest some knowledge. Say, hey, listen, how confident are you in knowing what you should or shouldn't be eating? Like, is it, is it a partial knowledge deal? Kayla, is, is that why you think maybe you're not eating what you need to be eating? And then people might say to you, yeah, you know what? I'm not even sure where to begin. I know we talked about that one habit, but you know what? It just sounds so vague. I, I would like some more clarity here. Okay, well, that's great. So why don't we do this? I think this, this will be helpful. I'm going to suggest for you a documentary to read, to listen, or to read, to watch. Here's a really good documentary uh, to watch. We're going to pose that as one of the solutions. It's called Hungry for Change. If you guys haven't seen the documentary, watch it. It's beautiful. It's great. And it just suggests at the end of the, the, end of the documentary, it suggests some solid guidelines on what we can all do to improve our own health and well-being and lose weight. That's a great, great testimony, or, uh, or uh, not testimonial, a um, documentary to watch. And if you're going to assign that, and so anyway, so we, we put that as one of the solutions. We're going to talk about the documentary here in a minute. So that's three solutions. Hopefully they've given you one or two. So now we got four or five. We're good. We need at least three, you guys. All right. So at this point, we got, let's say we have five solutions because Gayla gave me two and I gave her three or three more. All right. So the, the three more that I gave her is 21 days of SGT, right, on me. Uh, two, text uh, twice a week for, uh, for eight weeks, right? And then uh, three, documentary. Here's what, what needs to happen. When you guys are brainstorming this problem, you've got to help your clients feel very hopeful uh, in this particular situation and bring tremendous amount of resources to someone who's unresourceful right now. 
And they're unresourceful because they're narrow-minded because they're stressed out. All right, and here you are, full of resources, bringing in lots of, and, and it makes problems when you bring a ton of resources, a ton of different ways to do something. It makes the problem appear very small. And that alone raises hope, which is ultimately how you want your person to feel when they get dumb. All right, so then step uh, six in our situation, you have the client pick one solution. All right, so Caleb, we discussed five different solutions, five different things we can do over the next week. We're not gonna implement all five, because that's ridiculous. I need you to pick one. Which one do you wanna do? And whichever one they pick, that's the one that we do. If she says, um, I wanna do 21 days uh, of SGT, I think that would, that would be helpful, great. And if that's the one that she picks, then we're gonna, I'm gonna schedule her out 21 days of small group training. It's gonna be on me, she's not gonna pay anything. But then in 21 days, the idea is to get her back on track. So in other words, Kayla and I are going to set up a time to meet again in 21 days because I want to review this plan. Is it working? And if it's working, great. I'm going to give her one of two options. Kayla, is this something you want to continue doing, working out two to three times a week in that semi-private setting? Or do you want to go back to your regular program, work out once a week SGC with unlimited team? What do you want to do? It's as, it's as clear as black and white as that. And she might say, you know what, I kind of liked it. What's it cost for me to upgrade? Let me show you. But I'm giving her a way out and a way in. Give her options. She, what, mostly, most of the time, what she'll probably say to you is, no, this is exactly what I needed. I'm so glad that we did this. It's exactly the kick in the butt that I needed. Great, because that was the intent of this whole thing, is to kick you, kick you in, the, in, 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 the, in the rear, sort of say, and put you into gear, right? And get you to start moving in the right direction. All right, now, keep in mind, you now have this 21 days worth of experience of you giving her this extra private attention as a reference point. In other words, you know that that worked to change her behavior. So in the event she slips back, which some clients will, you always have that as a reference point and she'll always remember it. And that'll always be something you can go back to and reference upon to possibly upgrade them to a bigger program they need to. But, but that's not the intent of this. Remember, that number one, your, your heart and your purpose and your soul and why you're doing this is to help the client change behavior. That's why you're doing this. If they upgrade, that's a bonus. But that's not why we're doing this. We all know that if the client's behavior changes, they're more likely to renew and refer people anyway, right? So it's a win-win for everybody. Right? The client gets what we want, we get what we want. If they pick, you guys, the documentary that, they want, that, that they're going to watch, get a timeline on when they're going to watch the documentary. So if Kayla says, you know what, I'm going to watch that documentary you suggested. That's great. So Kayla, if you're going to watch this, my question to you is this. Uh, so today is, uh, whatever today's date, we'll say today's Monday the 1st. Um, how much time do you think you need before you have come watch the documentary? Well, I think I can probably do it in the next three to four days. All right, so what you're saying is, 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 is it all right for me to follow up with you on Friday? I'll shoot you an email or text much as just to check in if you watch the documentary. You cool with that? All right, and she'll say yes. Okay, and here's the thing. When you watch the documentary, I need you to take away one thing. And here's the thing I want you to take away. What will you apply? One thing. What, what is that one thing that you'll apply after watching the documentary? Don't, don't just give them something to watch and hope that they do it. That's BS. One, set up a date on when you're going to fall off. And two, give them a specific assignment. All right? Hey, guess what? When you fall off in you know, five days and they've yet to watch a documentary, <laughs> doesn't seem like it's working, first of all. So they might, oh, shoot, I forgot. Thanks for the follow-up. Okay, and then ask again. Hey, Kayla, it's Friday. Do you think you can get this done by Sunday evening? Can I follow up with you on Monday? Yes, I think that would be great. Cool. And do you remember what I want you to, to, uh, uh, to get out of the documentary? Yes. Okay. If they still don't do it by Monday, you have four other solutions to choose from. It's not working. Let's pick something else. And at this point, I might actually steer them towards the 21 days because I need to see them more, more, more uh, frequently with me in that private set. Make sense, you guys? So have a client pick one solution, schedule a time to review the plan, right? And you're not going to record the data in a four-week follow-up because it's not a four-week follow-up, right? But you're, 
your uh, what you are going to do is you, you you have the information written down, so next time you guys evaluate, you can you can go back to it. Make sense, you guys? Every month, or I shouldn't say every month. I would say probably every eight weeks would probably be ideal. Maybe every month. Yeah, I think it was every month actually. Every month, you should have you guys a couple of clients, maybe two to three clients, in on some sort of an improvement or a success plan. Yes. Giving them that extra TLC. You got clients that are struggling. What are you doing about it? How are you intervening? This is what they're paying you guys for, right? They want to get to here. They're currently here. They're paying you to close the gap. And whatever services that they purchased, it's not working right now. And so someone needs to intervene and acknowledge the fact that this ain't working. And that's all right. It's not working. What's not all right is for it to continue not to work. You and I need to talk about this and figure out a different strategy. Cool. So you would only put people on a success plan or an improvement plan if they are not happy right, with the outcomes they're producing. You know that in that instance, we need to intervene and provide some extra TLC. First of all, we need to figure out like, what's the issue here? Like, what's the problem? How can we help? And we can help by providing more support, more accountability, more guidance, Okay. Um, I can tell you for the trainers that uh, take the time to put clients in a success plan, clients love them because they change and they thank you for it. And thanks for acknowledging. Thanks for noticing that I'm not on track. I don't want to be not on track. Nobody pays you guys hundred, two, three hundred dollars a month to not be on track. Like that is ludicrous. Right? And if you go back and you check in with these individuals and you figure out why they're not on track, it could be, it could be a, a short-term deal. Somebody might say, you know, I got a big project at work or, you know, my, my kids are sick or my, my, my parents are sick. So it's a short-term deal or my head's just not in it. And I get that. And when do you think this will be over? Maybe in the next eight to 10 weeks. Got it. Meanwhile, we need to put you on a status quo plan. When, how would I know that you are, that you are completely falling off the bandwagon? Because right now you're not making any progress right now. You're not losing any weight. So what else needs to happen for me to, you know, pay attention more? Is this making sense? You guys, if somebody is like in some sort of like a crisis mode, give them some space. Right, but then ask some really high quality questions. Like what else needs to happen? Because I'm noticing now you're not on track but I want to keep you coming into the gym and you know just as well as I do that it's critical for your, for your overall relief of stress. Now, part of it is you guys might want to also tone down the intensity of the workouts for that individual. Maybe put them in a bunch of base level sessions because they're already stressed out of their mind. Cool. And so more working out isn't going to relieve stress. No, more working out, especially harder working out is going to cause more stress. Um, Different types of working out, meditation and yoga and lower intensity physical activity will help to alleviate stress. Okay. Um, what do you guys got for me? What kind of questions? Nothing. Okay. So you guys will have questions when you actually start doing this, right? So when we come out of this whole Corona BS, now you have a tool in your, uh, on your belt line, so to say, to help clients change. You have many other tools, by the way, you have fitness evaluation. That's a tool, like all the tools right within the fit. That's a tool to help clients change, right? You have your actual SGT and team training sessions. That's a tool, your ability to, to text people in and do these zoom video calls. That's also a tool. An improvement plan that's also to pulling out different tools to help your clients change. You got to do whatever you got to do to make sure your people are moving forward. Okay. So I looks like I got a question. Kayla, our fitness assessments were supposed to be this week. How would you adjust your timeline when we come back? Give them some time when they come back. All right. So um, when people uh, when people come back out of their uh, out of their uh, hibernation. Um, give them a little bit of time to kind of get acclimated, to get, to get used to like, we'll give people about probably three to four weeks before we do an evaluation week. 
and then just, you know, tape it, uh, taper it off from there on. But I think what would be cool to see is how well we did as a, as a health club, as a gym, to help our clients stay in somewhat good condition. So when we evaluate them, they, it, it's almost like they didn't take time off or there's very little setbacks. Right? But I think it's expecting, it's expected that your clients, when they come out of this thing, that probably you're going to have some people that are going to be more, first of all, they're going to be deconditioned more so because they haven't been as intensely maybe working out, even if we're doing AF live workouts. You got to be sensitive to that. Right? And then two, yeah, they're not going to be happy with how much weight they've gained. You know? So managing some of those emotions and preparing people as they're coming back and they recognize it, but it's still not fun to, you know, to know, but acknowledging that and kind of ramping up like the intensity of workouts um, and getting people back into the swing of things. Like once we have a, I'm going to, hang on, I'm going to stop this, this video. Um,